My name is Matt. I play a rogue changeling named Fox. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a long history with doors, but <laughs> I'm really hoping to change that. <laughs> hey, I'm Wash. I play Jebediah Peppermint. He's a, he's a, he's a wizard that's really good at casting gun. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you mess with the door, you get the hinges. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Mom always said. Um, I'm Jake, and I play Alan Wadrier, the Azamar Barbarian Artificer. Barbarian level four, Artificer level two. Um, and uh, door not forget anything that I just said right now. That was the worst pun I've ever said in my entire life. All right, let's continue. Yeah, you're, you're kind of a dork. Uh, I'm Josh. Oh, no. I'll be your game He's master unhinged. for the evening, your wing badger game master. And uh, I have been playing everybody else in this campaign. So, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. Not, I don't mind. I do it. I like it. Weird Zoth. flex, but okay. That's true. I played Zoth that one time when Zoth wasn't there, and I, w I had to, That's like, complain true. as him. I worked really hard on his voice, and then he stopped doing the voice. Dude. And so then it was like, eh, <laughs> that's whatever. Um, uh, but that's okay. Let's 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 talk about what's going on right now, Alan. Yeah. The sweet song of birds chirping floats gently through the small window of your stone room, accompanied mm. by a few rays of late morning sunlight. You sleep in a spare room of the barracks, and Jeb sleeps nearby in a storage room that is comfortingly dark. Tell me about Alan's morning routine, Jake. Ooh. -hoo -hoo. Alan wakes up, big yawn, big stretch. He rolls out of bed and you see that he's just wearing the same fur underpants that he always wears. Does he only have one pair? Uh, no, he has multiple pairs, but it just looks like the same. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but they all look the same. They're all the same, like, brown fur. Um, he rolls out of bed. He, you see him, like, he, like, scooches his legs off the bed, and then you see that his fur boots are, like, right there on the ground, and he just slides his feet into them. Uh, he stands up, and he first, like, goes looking around for his glasses, like, kind of, like, bleary-eyed, like, as if he needs them to see. And then he kind of, like, shrugs and laughs because he realizes he doesn't need them to see. They're just a recent addition to hit their, like, his spell focus. And so he goes and grabs them, puts them on, puts on his tool belt, and... He like d opens up a book. He rope opens up his artificer book at like it's our little desk in this room. Can I literally sure. add a desk? Okay, cool. At this little desk, and um, he kind of thumbs through it. There's a couple pages bookmarked, and he goes to one of the bookmark pages, and he like puts his face down in the book and like rereads it very carefully. And as he's doing so, he starts pulling out tools, and he pulls out. Uh, a his javelin, one of his javelins. He's had several, um, but he's running low on them, actually, and he only has one left. He pulls out a javelin from his pack, he puts it on the table, and he pulls out his tools and, from his tool belt, and he starts messing with it, like chipping little bits off of it. It's just a simple wooden javelin, um, uh, messing with the, the thing that tethers the, the, the actual, like, point, like, the, the, the steel point of the javelin to the wooden, uh, base of it, um, until he adjusts some things on his glasses, like, it looks like he's, like, kind of messing with the, the rims and, like, like, he's, like, looking at it in a different way, and then once again, as it's happened before, um, like, laser eyes come out of the glasses and sear into the javelin, and then, that stops. Alan picks up the javelin, opens up the window, throws the javelin out the window, waits for a couple seconds, and the javelin reappears in his hand. And he gives a little fist pump, and he is very excited about that. So, what, what Alan has done is he's used his level 2 artificer ability, Infuse Item, which can be used to infuse up to two non-magical items with magic at a time after, like, right following a, um, a long rest. And because he's level two, he can only infuse up to two at a time. Um, and he only knows four different, like, things. One of them is returning weapon, which he just did to this javelin, which also gives it a plus one magical, like, damage modifier. Um, and 
he can essentially, after a long rest, infuse any other items with magic, with, with these magical abilities as well, but he can only do two at a time. So like, let's say the other thing he, he's gonna do is um, imbue his glasses with uh, like a plus one spell focus thing. So his spell, like his spell damage modifiers are plus one. But since he's infused these two items, next time he wakes up from a long rest, he can do that to other items as well. It's just that however many, like if he does it to two other items, the, then the magical Im imbued properties of these two items will go away. Or like if he does it to one other item, he chooses one of the two items that he's already done it to to make it go away. Cool. So yeah, hmm. that's what he's doing. I love that. And as soon as he finishes doing that celebratory fist pump, <laughs> I got my javelin to work. You leave the room to go and tell Jeb about it because he's right down the hall. You're oh, excited yeah, to sure. show him. For sure. And you actually bump into Jeb who was just coming down to see you because Jeb is also excited. He's had a pretty great morning. They were so accommodating here at the barracks that they cooked you one of your all-time favorite breakfasts, which you've just finished eating. What delicious breakfast have they prepared for Jebediah Peppermint? Oh, man. I mean, it's it's absolutely Dober eggs over easy with, with like, that really nice cracked pepper and, and like, a little bit of salt. Like, like there isn't... It's really simple. It's really plain. It's almost like military food, but it's, like... And they and they did it like with uh with bacon, so it's like got the bacon grease crisp around the outside, and like I can see Fox just like our like elbows over the window, you know, drooling over this over here. But uh, but oh man, Dober eggs over easy, mildly runny yolk, kind of like that lava yolk mm. center, mm. and uh, yeah, it's so good. That's awesome. That that's that's incredible, Jeb. Uh, quite quite interesting. However, I have finally. Figured out how to imbue. Um, I, I, you are as you already know. I can do. I can imbue small objects with small amounts of magical properties. Mm. I can make this spear come back to me when I throw it. Ooh, so like, like you got like a rope on the end or something like that, or? Uh, no. Watch this, and then Alan will like. Well, hold on, down hold the on. Hallway. Let's. Oh, okay. Okay. Check down the hallway. Is there anyone walking down the hallway towards? No, at okay. this moment, there's no one walking down the hallway towards the storage closet that Jeb slept in. Sweet. Yeah, it's just, just got a, a fried egg on a fork, and he's just like eating it. He's like, yeah, I'm ready for it. Here, where are you going? We'll just throw the throw the javelin down the hallway. It'll like clack on the floor for like two seconds, and then just appear back in his hand. That's amazing. And like you just you just whipped it up. A, a little bit. It took a while. I had to study that that book and uh, some of the writings that uh, that uh, that uh, I'm so excited right now that Edison, no, that Mollusk gave me. And um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just uh, I'm excited, and I can do I can do other things too. Um, if we had a gem of a higher enough value, I could create a homunculus out of it. What's that? Oh, it's uh, it's like a, it's like a little magical servant, or like, uh, so you know what oh. you did with that little, that little bell. Um, oh yeah. Imagine that, but bigger. So mm. this conversation continues as the two of you make your way down a narrow staircase. You exit the barracks onto the sporting fields of Clan Trexta's holdings. Across the green, the village proper bustles with life. To your left, you can see a barkeep for the South Tavern rolling a few barrels from his storehouse into the kitchen, calling jovially to some guests inside. Beyond the tavern, a few young dwarves are playing some game you don't recognize involving hoops they've laid on the ground and are now attempting to hop through on alternating feet. Their laughter swims lazily across the ambient murmur of a place full of life to you. To your right, a bleary-eyed guard is giving his briefing to his relief shift at the village gatehouse, and directly ahead of you, all glistening chrome and etched details is your means of transport. A top of the line Edison cipher truck bearing the logo of four guys, ventures and vibes. Fox sits on the ground, cross-legged next to the cart. He balances a stone plate on one knee, just finishing up a breakfast of his own. Fox, what delicious breakfast have they prepared for you? You gotta hit me with that toast, man. Mm. Just straight like toast? Some... No, this is French toast. Ooh. I forgot the French Ooh. part of it. Mm. Um, I'm not sure what they would call it. You know, it's a dwarven toast. How about that? All right, dwarven go. toast. Um, and it's it's got this nice honeyed, you know, outer layer that they then they cook and fry on a pan, um, and then they add some egg to it, and so then there's this like egg mixed in with the bread, and and then they just slather that with butter, and and then you just put like a a nice sausage sausage or two with that and bam you got yourself a nice quick easy breakfast and you know what it's low in the calories it's not gonna 
overweigh you down, you know, in the mornings, you know, you don't want to be too full because you're about to go exercise. You, who knows what you're about to do? You could be in a fight. You got to be able to exert yourself. So you got to, you know, eat small, but good. For sure. Love that for you, Fox. As the two of you get closer to Fox, though, uh, you realize that he, he actually looks a little distressed. Fox, what are some of Fox's like nervous twitches, like feet bouncing, thumb twitch? You know, what, what are, what is, what's his giveaway? What's his show? Um, well, as I'm uh, finishing my uh, plate, uh, you can see that the plate is bumbling back and forth as I'm just moving my foot back and forth. I'm in a crisscross, and as soon as I have a hand free, I uh, start pulling out one of my daggers and rolling it between my fingers and reflex, you know, reflexively changing it between front grip and back grip. Is that what you call that? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> it's forehand and backhand would be the way you describe that group, ah, but it's okay. Um, Fox, stupid, you are distressed. Stupid, okay? <laughs> you are distressed because you went to uh, get Zothkug this morning and he wasn't there. What was the reason that you wanted to talk to Zothkug this morning? You know, were you going to get him for breakfast or, you know, what, how did you discover this? And then go ahead and tell the party your news. Hey guys, um, you, you haven't seen, uh, Zoth around, have you? Uh, n no, I just woke up and then met Jeb in the hallway. First thing. All right. So, um, I, I want to go talk to Zoth. You know, I, I kind of felt bad about yesterday. What, what, um, what happened yesterday? Well, you know, the whole like dead man thing. Uh, 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 oh, I get, yeah, I, I guess that, that may have, um, distressed him. Did he seem distressed? Yesterday when he it was happened? a little distressed about it. Um, so I thought I would check on him this morning and see how he's doing. Cause you know, I, and not that, you know, I care about him that much. I mean, come on. He does like constantly weighing me down. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I just, he, he looked like he could use a little help. Um, and I can't find him. Oh, so you, you guys, you, you guys didn't run into him. Right. Uh, no, I I remember he did mention um, wanting to check out the markets uh, last night. Um, do you think that maybe he went there first thing? You know what? Yeah, you're probably right. We should probably just he's probably in the markets. Yeah, you know, he's, uh, he's probably he's probably you know you know filling up on supplies. Yeah, you know what? I'm I've done breakfast. Uh, I'm just gonna. I mean, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I might be. I might just go check on the markets. You know, I'm, you know, just for my own shopping, and maybe I'll find out there. You know. Sure. Alan, um, you were able to to track that one guy down yesterday. Would you maybe be able to see if there's any trace of Zoth's uh, footprints around? Oh yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, if you if you can do that, Alan, that'd be pretty cool. That, that sure. Um, that may save us some time if he's not at the market. Side. Um, yeah. So Alan will will uh did, did he just sleep in the cart? Where did he where did he sleep? Yes, he would have slept in the cart. Okay. Um, Alan will go down to like around the cart and like start uh, looking for any tracks. Uh, he would roll. You're cutting in and out, bud. Sorry, um, I was looking at my character sheet. Um, <laughs> he would roll. Dude. What would he roll? <laughs> uh, he would roll survival to track survival, somebody. Okay. Do do do. Okay, let me look at that. By the way, I want to say um, I love how when you look down, wash like you're looking at your notes and stuff. It's just your entire hat it's takes up the, the whole screen. Uh, sadly, it rolled a natural one plus two, which is three. <laughs> I'm expecting yep. to sort me into a house. So there is no easy uh, trace of where Zothkug went. He's nowhere to be found. And you know what that means. That means it's story time at the Wing Badger Tavern. We'll be right back. <gasps> oh, no. Sinir. Gontos. Kotex. Awara. Long ago, the four ancients created a world in harmony. Then, everything changed when the chat emped magic. Only Kelnor, master of good vibes, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. Two years have passed, and four adventurers have discovered a conspiracy, a company selling magic. And although their roleplay is great, they have a lot of XP to earn before they're ready to save anyone. But I believe they can save the world. Suddenly, the peaceful camp seems to mock you. Zothka could have left at any time last night. Uh, what, what are you going to do to try and find him? 
Uh, well, I don't. I can't tell anything from over here. Maybe we should just check the the, the markets. I mean, I, I I really can't tell. I'm sorry, guys. I I'm, I'm yeah. Sure uh, um, I'm sure he's fine. No. We should just check the markets. Let's, let's I mean, maybe market. somebody would have seen him. Where where there now there really weren't any people walking around last we, night we though. And things were kind of dead. Yeah, we got here yeah. at like two a.m. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure there wasn't weren't many people out. There weren't even many people at the tavern when we when we stopped there for a drink before before bed. I mean, there's got to be uh, some sort of morning guard, right? Maybe they maybe he just got up early and went to the market. You know, um, is there? I'm looking for anybody who looks remotely like a guard. Yeah, I mean, there's a guard in the gatehouse. Remember, we saw the the relief right right uh, shift taking over. So there's a guard in the gatehouse, and then beyond the gatehouse is the main bazaar of Clan Tructa. They have these big two long pavilions that have been built out in front of the village and that's the bazaar so that traveling convoys can sell wares they can sell their wares and then everyone can also exchange or trade things as they go about their business if you guys just wait we're out i'll go check with the uh with guardhouse maybe you know see who was on shift uh Uh, perhaps uh, you could you could check with the guardhouse and we check the markets that way we just um in case something did happen to zoth i'm sure the faster we find him probably the better right would you yeah, like me to split up somewhere him. else? Uh, I'm not sure. Do we have any other good leads? I'm uh, honestly, he could just be in anybody's house. <laughs> <laughs> the man seems to always talk his way into people's lives. So I, I guess to see if anybody saw him anywhere else. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, like checking checking from door to door, perhaps. Is that something you're comfortable with, Jeb? Or or if there's like I mean, an apothecary or any plant or medical place, an apothecary would be a great. There place. is an apothecary. Perhaps that's yeah. I'll go, up there. I'll go check out the apothecary. Perfect. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I would like each of you to roll an investigation check as you go in search of information, and then we'll we'll go one at a time to each of your locations and see what you find. And let's start with Owlin, who's going out to the bazaar. I got a nine total, sadly. All right. Owlin, you head out to the bazaar, and it is a, an absolute feast for your eyes. Mm. There are all kinds of interesting trinkets and knickknacks and things being sold here. There are intricate pieces of jewelry and stonework. There are even some functioning pocket watches, like gears and, and mechanisms, whatever that you wind up. Ooh. Um, there are some cool like abacuses and things. But as you're looking around that, you kind of get distracted from your search. <laughs> so you find one person who, just as they're also shopping, they're like, um, yeah, well, I, I saw a big guy wandering around last night. I mean, it, He'd probably been scary if he didn't look so darn sad, but I didn't see where he went. Oh. And that's like all that um that's the only one that you that you you were able to find while you're out there. Can I can I check up on that person? Can I, I mean I, I mean you can, them? but they're like they're busy shopping and stuff. Like they're not they, they, they don't seem to want to give you the time of day. Uh excuse me. Um that that uh, who did you mention? You mentioned seeing someone last night in around here? Yeah, the, you said you're looking for a big guy. I saw a big guy wandering around last night, but I don't know where he went. He was in the, you know, in the village. He just was wandering. You don't, you, you didn't see which direction he may have gone. No, I, no, I didn't. I, I'm trying to do my shopping here. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Are Thanks, you gonna guy. buy this? Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, have a good, have a good day. Yeah, I, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Jebediah Peppermint, you headed to the apothecary. Uh, what did you roll on your investigation check? So I rolled it with advantage because I rolled pretty low and I want to use my first, att- like the the first of uh, my uses of the rod that gives me advantage on intelligence-based checks. Um, so however you want to interpret that, but I got an 18 plus six for a 24. Cool. I think of that as like you went to the apothecary, had your conversation, and like you realize you like said something wrong or offended the guy, and so you like reverse time and go back, but don't say that thing. That's my favorite That's version crazy. of how this goes. You're is that like, how that works? Yeah, that didn't work. Uh, it is now for this moment. Um, okay. It's it's like a PlayStation game where like you hit X to say the one thing or circle to say the other thing, <laughs> and you have to pick the right dialogue line. Um, so you shouldn't have doubted. Yeah, you're talking to the. What do you call them? A Apo- The, the apoth- um, alchemist. I believe they're an apothecary. No, they. Uh, I don't know. You're talking to the 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 
steward of the apothecary. The proprietor, indeed. So you're so talking yeah, to the, the proprietor. apothecary is the name of the person as well as the place. Cool. So yeah. you're talking to the proprietor of this apothecary, and uh, they're busy, like you know, they're kind of mixing things on their shelves and whatever. But they say, uh, "Well, I, I haven't seen him, but you know, there's, there's probably." Written, I mean, they keep written records at the at the gatehouse, you know, of everyone who comes in and out. I'm sure they would have a record of where he went. Um, yeah. So you should you should probably head over there and ask them. They if he's left the village, they'll know, and that way you can at least narrow it down to whether he's in town or out of town. Okay, and I will since the other guys are kind of like checking much bigger places, like the entire market and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll kind of buzz over there real quick before checking in with the guys. Sounds good. Fox, you go up to the first guard you see who is at the front gate. Um, and the he's the one who, you know, we saw him kind of taking over for the night shift. And he's just he's just chilling up there doing his thing. Um, you check in with him and he says to you, well, I, I mean, I, I didn't see anything. But, you know, there there might be records of it. I don't know. The night shift, you know, they sometimes they keep these records. Sometimes they don't, whatever. But there's there's probably paperwork in the barracks, you know, if you if you just head up there. But they should have a log. You know, if they did their job right. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for being chill about it. Yeah. Hey, Vox. Hey, Vox. Uh, yeah. Hey, Joe. Like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> if you ask one of the guards, I, I think that they might have like a record of if someone came in and out. Uh, somebody just told me that. So I'm here to like. Jeb, you know, yeah. you saved me a lot of time. I, oh, if I didn't know that, you know, I'm, I would have been wandering around endlessly. <laughs> These these little bones, man. I was pushing them as hard as I could to get here and just save you as much time oh, as, I, as I could. Just in time. I was just about to go waste my time. Um, but now that you've said that, I'm sure the first place that would be is the barracks. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, okay, and the two of you head back to the barracks. Um, sure enough, on the first floor of the barracks, there's a sort of secretarial desk and you know a bunch of different log books and paperwork and stuff. Um, someone looks at you and goes, can I help you find anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm not sure if it's public information, but we're looking for, um, our companion, our, our compatriot. Um, and very big, uh, very gray. yeah, he might've left sometime early morning last night and we're hoping to see if maybe he's in the log book. Ah, let, let me have a look through. The, you know what? Let me let me let me just call the night shift. He just came in. He probably hasn't gone to sleep yet. I'll be right back. And he, you know, slides out from behind his desk and hurries up the stairs. He comes back we down with a job. tired looking human who is just like, oh, all right, what's this about a, a missing guy? Who who are you looking for? Uh yeah, he's really hard to miss. Uh tall, gray orc. Mopey guy? Yeah. Yeah. Can be. I remember him. Yeah, he left uh he left Gosh, super early morning, probably one or two. Um, one or two. Yeah, he seemed downright sad. Refused protection too. I mean, he, you know, we normally offer to send an archer out with people. There's some nasty stuff out mm. in the woods if you wander too far. But uh, and as he recounts, the vision becomes a little clearer. Hey, where are you going? I'm going for a walk. You all right, man? You don't you don't look so good. Yeah, man, I'm just going through some stuff. I just need to, to be in nature, go for a walk, process it all. All right, big guy. You uh, you want Archer to watch over you? I'm not sure how long or how far I'll go. Uh, it's not necessary, but I appreciate the sentiment. It's, it's nice to see kindness in this world. Uh, may I May I go through? Yeah, I guess so. I hope you find what you're looking for, stranger. Me too, man. Me too. Wow. So what do you do with your information? Um, which uh, which way did he go? Like, which gate did he leave? Oh, we just left the front gate here, just the main one. We don't keep the other ones open at night. Okay. And DM, does that front gate head back towards the fort that we were at? Or which way does that I uh, It could. Lead? It basically leads out... So, um... Clan Trukta is at the bait, like the divot in one of the hills. It leads up the hill and then over to the other side where there's some more woods and things. So he could have gone south and followed the Misty Run River, which is the river you were camped at before. Or he could have gone 
to the west, which would take him back towards the keep. Could be either of those two directions. But you can probably like once you get outside of town where all the footsteps are, there's a good chance you can pick up his trail if you you know if you search hard enough. Hey, uh, Jeb, let's let's go tag up with Alan since he seems to be really good with tracking. Yeah, I tell you what, I'll uh, I'll go get Timmy and Tommy and hook up the cart and uh, like like get the cipher the cipher truck ready and I'll meet you there. All right. I'll be at the front gate when, uh, with Alan then. Yeah. Timmy and Tommy are dressed up in their shiny new um, Four Guys Adventures and Vibes armbands. They've got on their best banditry clothes. It's like, you know, they've done <laughs> their best to like iron it. The shirts are tucked in, even though they're still kind of <laughs> worn and tattered. Um, and as you walk up, they're like, all right, we're ready for duty. Uh, what, what can I do for, for my job? I'm, this, is my, this is a job, right? I, what, what do I do? It's day one. Yeah, I mean, so first off, A plus effort on on getting yourselves cleaned up. Um, we will, you know, issue some some proper uniforms once you once we get you back to headquarters. But but for the time being, you're just gonna run support from for, for us, and you know, just kind of uh, get to keep your eyes on us and and watch how we do, and just to kind of learn the ropes. You know, learn by by observing for for a little bit first, and then once we get you back to headquarters, and we'll get you uh, trained in with uh with Val. I mean with Zell. And uh yeah, well she'll she'll get you trained in and, and out on your own missions and that'll that's that's where the big bucks are. That sounds great. We could do that, right, Tommy? Of course we can, Timmy. I gotta be honest, Amazing. I forgot about Tommy and Timmy until until Jeb mentioned them and I was like, Oh yeah, Tommy and Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about those guys. Love those guys. That's, be yeah. that's because I listened to you last episode like an hour ago. <laughs> love that um okay so they they get the cart all hooked up and ready to go fox you walk out into the bazaar and just like owlin saw it really is like it for a rogue it's a different kind of field of dreams but it is a uh <laughs> you know it's a widespread of tables under these pavilions they're they're covered so there's canvas roofs but they're open walls so it's just kind of poles that are holding them up and then vendors have just set up at little u-shaped tables where they just set out their wares in the morning and can sell things so there are you know um clothing makers and there are little jewelry smiths and there are, there are all kinds of things there's even a little um wingle digit exchange you know that's taking gold and giving wingle digits um, like a you know we buy your gold type place yeah um there's a little pawn shop you know there's just all kinds of stuff everything anything you can imagine is there um and all right real flight of hand what are you trying to steal um a ring a Rings ring look cool okay yeah Roll slate of hand. I will roll an. Uh, I will roll a something. So, admittedly, perception. perception that's what my, it's called. Yeah. It hit my nail file, but my nail file blessed me <laughs> with a nat 20. Yo! A nail 20. Okay. Uh, you are able you to successfully it. swipe a ring. Wash, I would like you to tell me the details of the ring he swipes. Oh. Okay. Let me roll two dice. All right, all right. So the uh, the ring is actually made of copper. the The metal is not very ornate. It's not like platinum or anything like that. It's a it's a simple copper ring, but it is decorated incredibly well. Um, it has carvings of of two dragons that are like swallowing each other's tails, and there are, are two emeralds set into the eyes of each mm. dragon, and they are opposite of each other. Very cool. Wow, I got a cool ring. <laughs> that is cool, I'm put, dude. I'm putting that on immediately. Yeah, I love that. Oh wait, does it have like a an inscription on the inside? Wash? No, but um, but it is a little tarnished on the inside. It's got like that green oxidization from the copper, okay. like it like it had been worn a lot by some individual. Like it's not a new ring. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Did I did I just take a ring from a pawn shop? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll find. I'll go find Owlin. Do I need to nice. roll investigation? Uh, no, you don't need to roll investigation because you know Alan well enough that you just kind of follow the trinkets. So you're <laughs> like, you know, where, where would I find some interesting or delicate trinkets? Where would I find some unique construction? And sure enough, when you get there, there is Alan awaiting you. Alan is looking at the smallest pocket watch he's ever seen. 
and he's marveling at how small and tiny the gears must be inside of it. Yeah, that's it's wow. Um, hey, Alan, that's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna, yes, like tug on his shirt. Uh, I guess you have nothing to tug on. Tug on your arm. Um, <laughs> uh, did, uh, did you find him? Yeah. Um, we we didn't, but we could use your expertise. Um, uh, okay. If uh, y you said you were good at tracking, even though you didn't find anything right away this I, morning. I, I will say, I don't know if I've ever claimed to be good at tracking. I think that Jeb assumes I'm good at tracking because of my demeanor. Um, I've always assumed you're good at tracking. I am decent at tracking. Because of um, your demeanor. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I am overall mostly simply decent at tracking. I would be more than willing to hand over the tracking reins uh, if you if like if that makes sense. Anyway, let's else. go over and get you tracking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what, what was the lead? Did you find any leads? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, as we're walking over, uh, we talked to one of the guards, um, and l luckily we were able to catch the night guard before he fell asleep, mm, and good. he had actually talked to him. Oh, great. Where where did he go? We have no idea. He just left through the front gate at like 2 a.m. Oh. By himself that's without like, escort. That's right after we went to bed. Like right. Yep. He just left. That's. He's that's got. Troubling. Quite a few hours ahead of us. Yeah. Do we. Do we know what he set out for? Like what. Is he trying to find something? I mean, keep up, Alan. We're, we're, we're I'm, I'm picking sorry. Up I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, it's hard for me to, to think and walk at the same time. I'll, I'll, I'll do the walking now and the thinking in a bit. Uh, okay, hey. roll a survival for your tracking check. Oh, okay. Ooh, 21 this time. I rolled well. Ooh. You your are demeanor is showing. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely able to pick up Zothkoek's tracks. Uh, for one, he's an orc, so like, he's... He's he's a you know fairly big dude. He's gonna leave some some trail. Um, but also you know Zoth pretty well, and so you're able to look at the terrain and be like, based on his gait and the way he walks and travel, you know where would he likely pick his path? Just because you know the guy, and so it's not long before you uh, pick up the trail and um, you notice that his footprints seem pretty close together. Like he's I, yeah. I, I will say, um, if we're setting out from the city walls, Alan will probably notify, um his friend before they leave like hey we're gonna we're gonna head out like our zothkug left basically we're trying to we're trying to find him alan we, we don't have time for that Al Al I, alan we just leave a note with the guard man we gotta uh, okay he's he's hours ahead of us man we gotta go that's i mean i i know we're not any rush but you know this is Zoth we're talking about it's yeah, like 10 30 yeah. or 11 a.m now so based on him leaving it too it has been like eight nine hours okay um i'll i'll I, if it's all right with you guys, I'll, I'll I'll leave a note with the with the with the watchman. So Alan, I'll, Alan basically left a note saying our friend left in the middle of the night. We need to go find him. Hopefully, we'll be back. There's not a guarantee that we we will be back, but we, I would love to try to be back. And if we're not able to be back, like it was amazing catching up with you. You seem to be doing great work here, and I still would love to learn more about your research because. Alan is so nerdy about that stuff. You know, so, it's it's yeah. not you, it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so you pick up the trail, like okay. I said, and his footprints seem close together. Like he's walking at a lazy pace or like meand like he doesn't really know where he's going. He's just kind of mm. meandering around. Um, and at one point you can, um, you can see that he, he did go over the hill and has entered the woods. Um, it's and grandmother's house he goes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, as he enters the woods, you pick up another set of tracks that kind of comes out of the woods and then turns and follows his his footprints. Do I know what those are? I'm about to tell you. Okay. Um, you see four <laughs> sets of tracks in total. Three of them are big clawed feet, and one of them is a set of round feet. Um, and you can use investigation or nature or you know you could justify a check to me to try and learn more about them but that's what you're able to find just from tracking um alan will will look at those and uh just kind of and kind of beckon both jeb and uh fox over and be like oh, do you, i i i know jeb you're you're more of an expert on below ground animals so i'm not sure if you'd be able to identify these but uh, this fox. is this is not my forte unfortunately uh i i've made traps a couple of times in my life to hunt some animal but i've i've never tracked whatever this is 
Yeah, unfortunately, Zoth's our nature guy. Uh, this this is this is true. Um, hmm. Maybe let me see if I can't remember anything Zoth talked to me about. Um, what would you say I should roll to remember a conversation with Zoth? Um, for remembering, would be... I would say insight. Insight? Okay. I'm going to see if Zoth ever talked about anything that sounds like it would even be this big. And I kid you not, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have terrible rolls after this because I just rolled my second nat 20. <laughs> Dang. You could remember Zothkug telling you about one of the coolest creatures to roam the woods. Uh, and of course, you were like, but it's giant and could kill me. And he was like, but it's cool, man. Like, what if you could tame one of them? It's called an owl bear. Mm. And they're they're pretty large, but they have the you know the three toed clawed feet like you're seeing in the ground here. Um, but they're they have the heads of an owl and kind of the talons of an owl, but the body of a bear. So they're they're large creatures, and they generally like they kind of live in very small family units, but not in like packs. So it might be like a mom and two cubs or something, you know, because you're seeing three sets of prints. So it could be like a mom and two cubs. They're probably not all adults because they're very territorial. So, um, that, that's what you think those, those, uh, three identical sets of prints are, you know, you are not sure about the, the set of big round footsteps, at least for the claws. It sounds a lot like this one time, what was it? Soft Cook was talking about these like bears that are like owls. Mm. I don't know. It sounded like some vicious Ooh. stuff to me. Owl, owl bears. Yes. Who? Um, I, 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 I get it, Jeb. Ha, huh. that's very, that's very funny. Um, I do. <laughs> there's a Ooh. good example um uh yes they they're they that would make sense because this seems to be probably and uh, you know alan's basically just rephrasing what josh has just said uh like a, a cub a couple cubs and a, and a parent of some sort and um wow uh i don't owl bears can be dangerous and territorial but also if if uh, zoth doesn't mess with them necessarily then Perhaps, perhaps he will be just fine. But this is more of a reason to try to find him immediately. I'm glad we we struck out when we did. They're like the. I've, oh, I was ahead. just gonna say I've I've heard they're grizzly and foul, and I don't want. And I'm kind of worried about them. Uh, well, let's let's uh let's make haste. Uh, entering the woods, I would like a renewed. Uh, survival check to because it's harder okay. now to just continue on with the trail. I won't make you roll it at disadvantage because you already had his trail going into the woods. I only got a 12. Okay, with a 12, it's slow going, but you're able to follow the trail. Okay. So it, it's a lot of like, oh shoot, we lost it. Let's backtrack and you know, and you kind of find it and, and move your way around, but you are able to follow the path. And after an hour or two of sort of winding through the woods, and there are Little birds chirping, but certainly no sign of like an owl bear or anything like that besides the tracks you follow. Um, you come to a point where you, you can tell that Zoth was pacing back and forth for a while. Um, he was standing still, um, and then he would walk back and forth. But like the, the feet, the depressions of his footprints are just, you know, he was wandering for a while here. And you can see the wilted remains of two of his magic leaves on the ground, indicating that he used some kind of spell or something. And as you're sitting there trying to, you know, put the pieces together, you start to kind of reconstruct what might have happened to Zoth in this forest in your mind. Hey, it's Zoth. We only have 25 words. I now understand how you must have felt when I hurt plants and trees. What has happened? Is everyone all right? Through actions we took, uh, someone was killed unjustly and unnecessarily. H how do you get over or cope with others when others do this to your kind? Before meeting you all, I did not know others did this to my kind. I have still not found my peace. I am searching. As you begin to kind of put together his conversation with Yeah, you also are able to see that all five sets of tracks, Zoth and the four things following him, um, wander out of the, the woods and they're kind of going up and over the next hill. Dang. Uh, yeah, let's follow that. <laughs> yeah, guys, I, I think we should probably pick up the pace a bit. I, 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 know I agree. I'd... I'm, but we'll, we'll go as fast as we can. 
Um, as you kind of speed up and make haste over are the we, hill, are we on the? Uh, I assume we're not on the um, the cyber truck, the cipher truck, right? I assume you wouldn't have taken we, it into the woods. Yeah, we probably left it outside of the woods with our two two boys. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, as you uh, kind of increase your pace and head up to the top of the hill, you hear a large shriek from Ooh. the woods to the side of you. Not a not a creature like not Zothkuk shriek, but like a a wild beast kind of shrieking. Um, near you in the woods and it sounds like a cross between like the who of an owl <laughs> and like the growl of a tiger or another large cat um, and you hear some stomping footsteps in the woods they still haven't come like you don't see anything but you do start to hear some evidence that maybe these owl bears are nearby um, on the other side of the hill the woods begin again as it kind of goes down and into back into like another forested area um, I would like one more survival check to see if you can continue to follow the tracks or okay. at the pace at which you follow them. Ten. Ten. Okay. Um, with a ten, you're still following the tracks, but you're certainly not doing a good job of masking your own passage. And before long, sure enough, a couple of stomps are the only warning you get before uh, an owl bear comes stomping out of the woods um, and stops before you, basically right at the edge of the forested clearing. And behind this mother owl bear are two cubs. And the owl bear looks at you and gives that same weird shriek again. But it doesn't approach, and it doesn't seem like it's going to start a fight with you. It seems more like it's trying to ward you away from a territory. Is it uh, in the way of us getting to the path? Yeah, it is on the path. Oh. Like it has stepped out basically from the trees onto your path to, okay. to block you. Whoa, 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 okay. Alan's first reaction will also be to, like, put hands up and, like, not try to encroach on it. Yeah, don't bite. As you lift your hands up, it slowly stands onto its rear legs as well and, like, holds its hands up. Like, maybe it thinks you're, like, you know, trying to make yourself more imposing or whatever. Alan puts his hands down. <laughs> it stays there on its hind legs but kind of drops them into, like, lazy bear pose, you know, where it's, like, sniffing the air, <laughs> looking towards you. All right, let's, uh, Alan, oh. uh, Jeb. Do you, walk around? Do you do you understand us? The owl bear sniffs what? a couple times. I I I don't think the owl bear understands us, Jeb. Okay, okay. I mean, I get that words are coming out of your face, but think for a second. This is a magical creature. This is not a natural thing. You know, there are owls and there are bears. So let's let's not just jump to conclusions yet. I will say, uh, logically speaking, uh, neither owls nor bears understand humans. I'm not sure why a combination of both would. Um, I, got, I got it. DM. Yep. Um, I have a permanent comprehend language cast upon myself when I hold this rod. And I can understand any creature that speaks any sort of language. If I, like, in, in my trying to communicate with this thing... Like, if, if it has an intelligence and is capable of speaking the language, I would be able to understand it. Okay, so you can understand what it says, but it cannot understand what you say with you having the Comprehend Languages spell. Um, okay, that, I mean, that's fair enough, but I'm just yeah. curious, like, with, like, with my body language and, and stuff like that, like, yeah. Sure. Why don't you um, roll a charisma check to try and, like, impart general ideas um, because you have comprehend languages, that shriek when it was in front of you at the front of the woods, it was saying, don't come any further. This is my home, basically. Like, this is, okay. this is my territory. Um, and I know this is a little bit of a stretch, but seeing as though, like, I am a mole folk, but I am more animalistic in my appearance than these other two. Um, could I perhaps persuade an advantage out of you for, like, taking my hat off and, like, being a bit more animalistic in my my gestures and communicating to him jeb's going primal sure i'll give you advantage i'll give you advantage okay. for that Jeb on at least the unleashed. first check we'll see how it goes from there oh that's an 18 and a 19 this is a charisma oh. check yeah charisma great charisma so that's a 20 total okay so what is the general idea you want to impart to it so i just want to like motion like that that i that i understand and that that we don't mean harm and uh and that we can we can go 
around, like is going around safe. Like, okay, is, like so, is, is that okay? Um, for that first check, we'll say, uh, how about you, you're able to convey deference and it, so it comes from standing up, it comes back down onto its, you know, its front, front legs. Like, okay, I, I understand that I am respected as the leader here. Now you mm -hmm. can, um, roll again to see if you can get like basically permission to pass. Like, I, I just want to go around and not, you know, I, I don't want to, to be in a fight with you type. Type of I thing. just okay. And we'll just I just do this need an out. owlbear hall pass, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, not so good. So I'm going to use one of my chronal shifts and reroll that. Jeb with the re natural twenty Let's for go. a total of twenty one. With the so natural I, like, 20. I start, I start to to like you know I think I've got these gestures down. I like I even have claws in my hands like like them. And then I start to like motion a certain way, and she like gets tense. And I'm like, okay, hold on, woo, woo, woo. we'll wind that uh -huh. back, and uh, and then try it like safe to go around. You all watch Jeb attempt to do like a charade, and then the mama owl bear stiffens up, and Jeb like quick draws his blunderbuzz, and you see him rewind like in in super speed. He like zoo, 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 goes back to where he was standing, and then does it a totally different way. And this time, she like kind of relaxes a little bit, and she she snorts and begins leading you along the Whoa. side of the forest. Oh, pick up my hat, put it back on, kind of dust it off. Um, um, let's tread. Super lightly, she is the boss, and if she uh, makes any sign that we are not welcome somewhere, we respect that, we just move on. Um, worst case scenario, I can fly us over the forest one at a time, it'll burn up a bunch of spell slots, but you know, that's that's doable. Um, so let's just follow her lead, and uh, and I think we should be alright. You know, Jeb, I'll never, I'll never doubt you again. I'm gonna hold you to that, pup. I uh, generally don't doubt you, but I will say, if if we were if Jeb was able to do this, that means that Zothkug, who also never looks for conflict, um, perhaps also could have been able to convince the owlbear that he ran into um, as well. So, I mean, that's true. Yeah, I hope so. As uh, as Mama Owlbear leads you around, she looks back at her two cubs and shrieks again, and they sort of scamper back into the woods and, and I guess go back to their den or whatever. You know, she sends them away, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and she stands back always to your road. right, so you're walking in basically a circle around the wooded area, and she's just on the tree line, like kind of mm. escorting you through. At one point, you come to a river, and she actually picks up a boulder and puts it in the river for you to walk across, like a little stream, and like cool. makes a space for you to basically just. She gives you safe passage and keeps you out of her out of her wooded area. And when you get to the end of her area, which is bordered by this brook, so it kind of goes alongside and then eventually cuts into the woods. And she again gets you away to across the other side, and then she stays on her side. And she just kind of dips her head a little bit at you, Jeb, and then turns around and walks away into the woods. And you hear, yeah. you know, some some heavy footfalls as she moves into the distance. And then eventually um, they fade away and she is gone. The only downside of this is that you now have no idea where Zothkug's trail is. Mm. Well, um, I... I have an idea, okay. but let's hear what you guys have... First, my, my idea cause... is not great. It was more just to say I was already having trouble tracking um, this deep into the woods, and I'm not sure how well I'd be able to find the trail again. Fox, um, how confident are you that the Zoth would r walk in a straight line? Not at all. <laughs> okay, well then my idea is not going to work. I was going to say we could fly somebody up, maybe Owlin, since he's like good with geometry and numbers and whatnot, and he could like say we've gone, you know, and then maybe project the path forward. But if sure. the Zoth can be like windy and all over the place, then that's probably not going to be very reliable. We might be able to still work out like a cone uh, that would overlap with the edge of the territory that we just were told is not ours, evidently. Is in fact the Alpers. It's worth a shot. Uh, yeah, I could, I could uh, look up above, try to see where you know I could spot the cyber truck, the cipher truck, um, and see you know where we are now. Wait, and wait a minute. What? 
we locked the cipher truck with Tim. Timmy and Tommy, yeah. Yeah, Timmy and Tommy. Um, the two criminals. <laughs> they don't have a fob. Us- I've got the fob in my pocket. They're discarding it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, you know, when you think about it that way, it does, uh, is it unlocked? Change how you think about that. Yeah, but they can't start it up. But what about the stuff inside? I mean, hey, if they want to slap, you know, four adventuring packs, one on the front, one on the back, and bust their knees running away, <laughs> I mean, more power to them. I mean, that's just industrious. <laughs> that is true. They could use that capital to start their own business, and in that case, yeah. we have more competition, so. Anyway. Um, don't I... give the DM. I... Don't <laughs> tempt the gods, Alwyn. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd, I'd point the idea, you know, I just... No, I just, no, you, I mean, that's fair. I just don't think it's that big of an idea. I've already rolled uh, that Alwyn. percentile die, so don't worry about tempting me. I know what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alwyn, no. You, uh, you ready to get comically high up in the air? Uh, yes, I, I am. Okay, and if you guys remember the last time Jeb uh, cast the fly spell, it was through his small blunderbuss, and he rode it like a rocket. So, <laughs> Jeb is much smaller than Alwyn. Um... <laughs> And so I've I've still got big boy, and and Jeb hands over uh, his blunderbuss and preloads it with uh, with the spell shot shot and and like you know shows Alan how to twist it, lock it, the little the little feet flip out on the handle, and I'm like, you're <laughs> do your best. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan will will attempt to like mount this this comically small gun, and his feet like are like too big for the little feet. Uh, feet uh, rests like only halfway do they sit on the thing. You know, Jeb, I think this was a great idea. I can't. I, w- I want to see how this turns out. Um, I mean, we're gonna get to watch it the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So Alan will will get mounted and get ready, and then kind of like I don't know, awkwardly reach around to find the trigger and be like, "All right, uh, uh, well, I'll 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 see you guys in a moment," and then he'll pull the trigger and just. I just want to talk for a second about the scale of what's happening right <laughs> now, because the if if this thing is a, approximately like bicycle sized for Jeb, right? Then we're talking about we're talking about like if you, as Owlin, a seven and a half foot tall barbarian, were given like a one foot tall like remote controlled car, and they were like, yeah, just sit in the driver's seat of this and and hit go. Like that's what we're talking about right now. Um, uh, it's <laughs> actually it's actually better than that. Uh, I'd like to plug the Discord. Y'all should join the Wing Badger Gaming Discord and check out the streamers channel because I just posted a GIF in there of what this actually, exactly I think looks only like. Only streamers have access to. Oh uh, well, I'll put it in another but one yeah, too. Put it, put but, it in table talk. Table talk. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. But it's a very check funny that out. Little GIF. It's very accurate. Um. Anyway, so that's that's what's happening right now. I think because of that, I would like an athletics check for you to maintain your grip on the thing as it takes off. Okay. You'll only have to roll it once. I won't make you keep doing it unless something like really dramatic happens. You know, could, if could I make is a, doing that, could I plead a case for an arcana check? Sure. Why? I don't know if you're if it was higher for you or not. No. He's a barbarian. Okay. I, got, I got a 17. Okay, okay yeah. force it. You're able to do it perched <laughs> like a gargoyle on top of a handgun. You pull the trigger and still crouched like Spider-Man. You just zoom up into the distance. So, Fox, the the best thing about this is that I could have gave him Big Boy and he could have wrote on that. <laughs> no, no, no. I love this. All right, oh, yeah, me too. Totally. Don't bring it up. Yeah. Uh, He's totally got this. Alan, you are, I, I guess, however high up you go, it's 60 feet per, per round, right, that you can fly? Is that right, however, however high Alan can get to see the cipher truck in the distance and essentially like try to do the mental like geography of like seeing a like a straight line from like try to identify where like that clearing right. was before and draw a line from that from the cipher truck to that and then mentally draw another line like you know continuously forward from that through the bear like the the bear's territory that they just circumnavigated and like try to okay that's so that's essentially where we need to go to try to pick up the trail again and we are here and um, so we need to move from here to here if that can i interrupt sense. real quick yeah um all right kids break out your rulers <laughs> today's math problem 
find the distance that is optimally traveled from point B to point C after traveling from point A to point B. You will be graded. This is a pop quiz. I expect answers in the chat, all right? If you don't <laughs> answer in the next five minutes, it's, that's a fail. You get a failing grade. Dang. All right? All right. Well, while the kids work on that test, um, Alan is uh, rolling a perception check to see if he's able to spot the trail. He's able to figure... Well, first, he's got to spot the cypher truck. Could I... Oh, perception check to spot? I see. Yes. Okay. He's got, he's got 60 feet of movement. And he has 10 minutes. It's concentration. My concentration. Oh, I have 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first time, he only got a 5 on spotting the cypher truck. Oop. But I assume in 10 minutes, he gets at least one more try. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, with 10 minutes, uh, don't bother rolling the perception check. Because this isn't like a... I was thinking of it like a mortar shot where he like at the peak, he has to like calculate everything. But oh, he's okay. got time up there. <laughs> Then yeah, you just you know take however long it takes to find the thing. Okay. So you find the cipher truck. You still know where your party is, and then you kind of calculate you know where the direction would be from there. Um, I'm gonna let you make the next survival check with advantage when you get back down to the ground to okay. pick up the trail because you know kind of where you're going. So you're cool. able to calculate all those things. You do notice one other thing while you're up there. Okay. You notice that in the next stretch of woods, not exactly where you think Zothkug would be, but near there, um, there. There is a, a swath cut through the trees. Like something has walked through the forest that was big enough to like oh. push trees a little bit to the side and leave a little channel. And the it starts like at the it's at the edge of the forest, and then at some point the forest becomes bigger than the swath, and so it kind of covers up that trail. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Um Alan will make note of all those things, and then when he's when he come he'll he'll maybe try to signal to Jeb from up above that he's ready to come down. Um, and Oh, maybe... you're in complete control of yourself. Oh, okay. Well, then... I'm just maintaining the spell. Okay. Well, then he'll he'll uh, start to come down, and on his way down, he'll like kind of maybe even realize that he's able to, to, to like control it himself, and he'll try to do a little flip. <laughs> like uh, like a, little, a little barrel roll. Sure, you do your okay. barrel roll. Uh, and uh, roll roll an athletics check to decide how cool it is. You okay. don't fall off, but this is just like, is it like a, you know, oh, I kind of flopped around training wheels type barrel roll, or is this like a perfectly executed barrel roll? Let's see. This is a 14 of a barrel roll. That's a pretty good barrel roll. That's significantly above the average. Also, do you need dice? No, I'm rolling them digitally. Yeah, but you're in my house, dude. Do you want okay. some dice? I mean, I I've can. got the real ones. Uh, the, no, actually, the table's too far. Like, I have to lean away from the microphone to do it on the table. So I don't. I mean, you oh. can roll them in a dice bag. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. I just like you know. I got dice. Sure, here. sure. I'll take some dice. I'm just trying to what's, make my man's life a little better here. What's chat. what's what's Jeb got on his uh paper? It's too overexposed. I can't see. It's too overexposed. He's, he's holding up a ten. Oh, cool. Good job Thank on you. the flip. I appreciate it. Love that for you. But yeah, he'll he'll come down. It'll be great. Here's an assortment of dice with at least one of every die. Thank you. Yep. Jake is here, by the way, chat. He's visiting. That's um, why I look so cool. Yeah, chat says real dice are no. better, and chat's right. He just passed him uh, through the telephone line a bunch of dice. Yeah, he, it's uh, actually, sent me, he sent me uh, a a, miracle? an auto ferret. I just fling them at my uh, camera, and then they appear flying out of Jake's camera. Yeah, that's true. That's the way that it oh, works. Oh, yeah, I love how... I love how Matt works in IT and thinks that Discord audio goes over a telephone line. <laughs> it's my favorite. Zoom yeah, you, you don't use you don't use uh, DSL like. <laughs> you can dial, you can dial up Zoom over the phone. I know that you can do that, but this is all really you got good. Zoom on dial up. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, so you come back down, you do a fairly decent barrel roll, and then because you're still crouched on it like a little gargoyle, you sort of do a superhero landing nice. at the end as it comes down. Um, and now you are back on the ground, still precariously balanced on this small gun. Alan will dismount gracefully and uh, give the small gun back to Jeb and uh, nice. explain to them. Uh, so uh, I believe I have, I can, I've picked up a general area where we need to be checking next. However, um, in the proximity of where Zothkug may have gone, um, there seems to be a, uh, some, some parts of the forest that have been cleared away as if by a giant creature 
that simply by wading through the forest um, is just knocking over trees. That suddenly went into Jake's voice. I'm sorry. Is uh, has been uh, yeah clearing away the forest. Um, not not exactly good. It's very messy. Seems somewhat dangerous. I did not seem to spot the creature though. I'm not- I'm not excited about any creature that can quote wade through trees like that's terrifying to me i i also am not um excited by that and hopefully <sighs> zoth's uh path does not cross with with that area but just we do not tell know. me where it is because i get i know zoth he got involved somehow i i you know what that's I, a good you point are probably correct um we all know him well enough I'll, you know <sighs> Gosh darn it! I'll try to I'll try to pick up his trail from where I observed just to double check. Um, but if we cannot pick up his trail there, then perhaps this more dangerous looking area is the best next place to start. All right, I'm telling you, Alan will roll survival. He got, and you said an advantage. Yeah. Okay. He rolled an eighteen twice, so that's a twenty total. Thirty twenty. Look at him go. Um, yeah, you're able to pick up Zoth's tracks again. Sweet. Um, he, okay, so he wandered into this woods and he's kind of moving along and he comes, he came to this clearing and you now have come to this clearing. It's a shrine actually, um, in a small circular clearing of trees where stones form a perfect circle around a small pool. that sits smooth as glass, sunlight glinting sharply off its surface. Zoth's tracks lead right up to it, and a depression in the grass indicates that he slept here for a bit. Mm. Um, And then you then discern that he was startled awake by something. Oh, no. Uh, Does it it seem to be an owlbear that startled him awake? Uh, No, because you you don't see any other tracks nearby, at least not without making another check. You could do survival Um, or nature or investigate. You know, you can can use some abilities if you want to try and see. Nature would be great. Do I see a floating uh, flashback hanging in the air, perchance? Uh, I don't know. That depends on what you roll on your survival, your investigation, or your nature. Uh, Alan rolled a natural one on his nature. However, he has a plus six, so maybe it's a seven? Alan gets a little bit distracted by how perfectly smooth the surface of this shrine is, even though there's like a little brook feeding into it. This is, so like it's fresh water. I see. Really interesting. I, they must have I see his distraction. Using other did they how did they how would they have tumbled these this big of rocks though this polishing must have been extremely walk up uh put an arm on alan's shoulder as he's bent down looking at this you know it it must be really fascinating now alan it it truly is it's and it's you, you know what else is fascinating so time how this relates to where zoth is i'm really waiting for the connection uh Alan will like <laughs> kind of sheepishly stand up. I don't think I don't think Fox has roasted Alan that hard ever. <laughs> Alan will like sheepishly stand up and kind of like take stock of his surroundings for a second, look kind of stunned to be like, uh I I I guess you're right. I really I and his voice kind of changes. He's like, I kind of I do need to get out of my head sometimes, don't I? Uh, dang, I'm, dang I'm, pup! You, I'm sorry. You gave I'm, Alan a tan. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what? Where? Where were we? I'm, I, I, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to find Zoth. You, you know, he he's probably got something important that he really shouldn't get lost with it. You know, I, I just I I I don't want to. You know, I, I, he's, you're, be lost. you're right. You're right. I'm. I I apologize. Uh, what What's the next What's the next step? What's the next plan? Alan just took criticism better than the entire internet has ever <laughs> taken criticism. <laughs> <laughs> oh we should all aspire to be like Owlin. yeah Aww. what would Owlin do what is the next move here <laughs> dm's like okay yeah but he's on the right page what do we do now yeah, what you what you guys doing can i do uh, a uh can i do a smell check yeah mm. See if it, I haven't done a smell check in a while, and and at like to that point, also my sunlight sensitivity, Jed probably doesn't see really well right now. Like it's probably better when we're in the woods and yeah, and there's some trees blocking the direct sunlight. But he's just kind of like I'm trying to sniff for any, um, any obvious animal musk. Yeah, like you know, 
Oh, not good. Not good. Um, that's going to be a five. Did you roll Ooh. it with advantage? Didn't we say you have advantage on smell checks? Yeah, I did. I rolled a oh, four no. and a five. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. All right. Well, you're sniffing Big around, move. but you're like, the sunlight is so harsh that it's like hard to even, you like, you're squinting too it's hard. It's distracting. It's like, yeah. oh, man. Um, and it, it comes down to Fox. All right, guys. I know how to find Zoth. Um, I'm going to roll for a vibe check. <laughs> All right. Roll it with advantage because that's a great idea. Check in for vibes. Uh, what would be the modifier? Charisma. <laughs> for vibes? Come on. <laughs> you do, <dear> sir. <laughs> That'd be a 21 then. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, yeah, you, you pick up the vibes. So you're looking at the depression in the grass where he slept, and depression then right next the grass to grass for a depressed yeah. orc. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so you, you find next to it, like, ah, and here's the spot where he would have set down the his potted plant, and then next to that, you kind of see, like, oh, and here he sat cross-legged. He was probably meditating in this spot, and you sit where he sat, like, for his meditation, trying to see what he would be looking at, and you notice mm. across the uh, across the small pond... On the other side, there are two ferns that are bent in such a way as almost to make a seat for a small creature. And um, you, you kind of realize, like, maybe he, maybe he actually had a conversation with someone here, and the pieces start to come together for you. Let's see. Fox using... It's been many moons since someone visited my shrine. Here at the waters of Kotix, all may find peace. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, I didn't know anyone was here. Uh, who are you? I am Asandra, keeper of this shrine and watcher of the way. Along with the rest of my order, we vigilantly watch for events prophesied in the Book of Diverging Paths and do our best to steward the natural course towards the path of prosperity. Who are you? I, I'm Zothkug. Uh, my party and I have actually been tasked by Kelnor to uh, save the avatars. Hmm. She tilts her head, and small, semi-translucent wings flutter gently behind her, ruffling her robe gently. That's what Kelnor wants of you. What do you want? I want to enjoy joy life with my friends. I want magic to be restored. I want to feel connected to my god again, Kelnor. And yet, here you are, in pursuit of those things, and you seem upset. Indeed I am. Um, I, I really tried my best to live, live a happy life, to bring happiness to others. Yet we often find ourselves in, in grave peril, and we do things that I don't agree with and don't agree with the things that I believe. But it's usually for the greater good. Recently, um, someone was was murdered um, while he was incapacitated, knocked out. He was defenseless. Um, while he was a thief and he did steal, and that was wrong, I know. I, I don't believe death was the right punishment. We all must die to complete our link in the chain of being. She sits up, brightening with an idea. Tell me, this thief who died... Had he lived, his path and yours would have gone a different way. What might the result of that have been? Who's to say, really? If he got to live, maybe he would have been sent to prison or jail after we interrogated him, unless he was put into our care or we requested to be responsible for him. I do my best not, not to inflict pain. I don't like causing others harm. And as far as I know, um, the, the deaths caused by us have been out of necessity to either live and keep ourselves alive or to further our quest. The deaths caused by you have been out of necessity to further your quest, and yet those who died to further your quest likely considered you to be the villain. Her eyes soften, and her voice becomes still and calm as the pool between you. If you never inflict pain, you will always be a liar. The truth is often painful, and prosperity often lies behind trials. 
Would you see your quest from Kelnor fail to avoid that pain? Would you see your desire for joy with your friends broken to avoid the pain of conflict when they make choices you don't agree with? You say to me now that you don't want to hurt anyone, but it feels like a half-truth. You are holding something back to avoid hurting yourself. She slowly motions down to the pool so that you are looking at your pristine reflection. She tosses a pebble into the water, ripples distorting your face. Are you any less yourself? And what if you had turned away so as not to see the ripples wave across your face? Then you would not see yourself at all. The ripple still and your smooth reflection stares back at you. What ripples have you turned away from? Those other people probably did think us the villain. So much more complex than simply good and bad. Everyone has their own quests, their own goals, their own perspective of any given situation. I certainly will do everything in my power to ensure the safety of my friends and the uh, completion of Kelner's quest. I've, I've definitely turned away from, from all of our misdeeds. I've glanced over the pain that I've had a part in inflicting, even if I wasn't the one doing the inflicting myself. Those are things you have turned away from because your way has diverged. But what fork in your road put you on such a path to begin with? Zoth will look down at the water, swirl his hand in the pool, causing the ripples, and then he stares up until, it's, until it settles in size. He sits down onto the grass. I wasn't welcomed by my people. I was smaller, I wasn't as athletic, I couldn't keep up with all the other kids. I'd be teased. My parents would hear comments from all the other parents about how scrawny and weak I was and how silly I looked. I didn't have a place at my home. Kelnor helped me find purpose and something I could do. Magic. When it went away, I lost the connection I had with him. My place in the world. So I set out to figure out what happened and bring it back. Asandra leans back on a small fern that she's been using as a recliner. Now that is a path with purpose. Kelnor gave you a place in the world when he gave you that magic. He polished your link in the great chain of being. Her eyes sparkle mischievously. But he wouldn't have known about the darkening at that time. So I wonder why. No, 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 don't ask me. I am merely a watcher of the way. You are the one who must walk it. Farewell. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, before we part, could you tell me what those, those runes mean? At the bottom of the pond? Yes. She pokes her head back between two ferns, large eyes twinkling in reflected sunlight. They say, in nature, nothing is perfect, and everything is perfect. Something new for you to meditate on, my mellow friend. Thank you for your guidance. I hope you are successful in guiding more people on their paths. Uh, Zoth will now uh, sit down, contemplate everything that has been said, and meditate as he has done with you in the past. With a little shiver of moving fronds and grasses, the wheatling disappears. Big shout out to Trevor for his acting in that. For sure. Wow. Um, we stop our game and just keep playing Trevor's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Wow. Um, so I, I, I do have a DM question. Mm -hmm. um, it, are we consciously aware of these little flashbacks? Yes. These are you guys putting things together as you sort of uncover the pieces. And it's just you like, you know, you're, you're putting the pieces together. We don't necessarily need to know how you got so detailed in your understanding. Maybe he tells you later. But this is just a way of you kind of Guys, you're putting the breadcrumbs together and figuring look, out what's. I found this audio through. recording on the ground. <laughs> yeah, right. it's like a video game. <laughs> um, so yes, you do know the information in game if that's what you're asking. Um, okay, it's it's kind of a murky mirror situation. Uh, it's I've funny wanted you... to. Go ahead. I was just going to start. You go ahead and finish. I just was going to say it's funny that you mentioned Zothkug's game because at that exact moment. 
you hear a loud cry, uh, an orcish cry, like in the language orcish, and you hear... And I understand it. Boom! Reverberate through. Yeah, it's just a battle cry. It's just done in orcish. So it's just a yard, but it's an orcish one. Um, You hear a loud boom that reverberates through the forest, and a bright flash of light shines through the trees very briefly towards you, as if lightning has struck somewhere in the distance. Uh, I I believe we should follow that then. You know, I think I found the trail, guys. <laughs> Deb's already yeah. running. Yeah, great. You are moving as quickly as you can through the difficult to- terrain of the woods towards Zothkug. Um, who is probably Jeb is at the back just because he runs a little bit slower than everybody else. So Jeb at the back. Uh, you hear them first. It's loud crunching behind you as many feet fall, and then everyone hears them as they howl. A pack of wolves is tearing after you in the woods, probably drawn by the noise of your rushed passage. How many of them is impossible to make out in the blur of trees and undergrowth. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, the first wolf suddenly appears and snaps at your heels. He's going to get a single round attack, and then we're going to enter pursuit. He misses you with a three. Jeb is able to, like, jump to the side at the last moment. This wolf snaps right where you were. Um, We are now going to enter some pursuit, and you're going to have a chance to evade these wolves pursue it but they are right on top of you so as a reminder for everybody the way that pursuit works this is uh not quite a homebrew mechanic um in that like other podcasts have used it but it is new to here um the way that pursuits work is we have the uh we have we basically have steps and if you can get one step ahead of the person behind you then you are further away or harder to catch. So each round, you have a chance to get one step further. If you make it to three steps ahead, then we're going to roll for escape. If the pursuer catches up, closes it to a zero-step lead, then combat begins. So to start things off, let's make sure we have your pins on the board here. For those of you listening at home, if you join us live on Mondays, we have a lot of visuals to go with this stuff. And we'll start with you guys. What will you do to get an edge on the wolves that are following you? Is this considered a one-step lead where we're at right now? Yes, this is a one-step lead. Okay, cool. Also, I think our camera is... I know. Okay, cool. Um, uh, gosh, what, will, uh, what shall we do? What shall we do? I'm, I'm running. Yeah, but how are you going to run in a way that gets you an edge on these wolves? Uh, right now, uh, everyone is just running. Spell. Okay. What you doing, Jeb? Um, so, with a, for a little bit of cinematic flair, when that wolf nipped at my heels and I jumped, could I have jumped onto like Owlin's back, like grabbed onto it? Like, yeah, his absolutely. Pack? Like Yoda. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna like like loop my arm through one of the loops, and so like I'm facing backwards, like Owlin and I are like back to back, and I'm gonna pull out Big Boy, and I'm gonna lock a lightning bolt. And just torch all of these guys, and then he's gonna stop for a second and think. Zoth probably wouldn't like they're just wolves. Zoth probably wouldn't want us to just kill them. And he's going to shoulder it and pull out his blunderbuss and cast fog cloud and just whoa, just disperse this big cloud of fog and he's going to do it like ahead of us so that we like run through it and it gives us a little bit more extra time. Love that. Um, okay. So is there, do they have a save or anything or is fog cloud? It just creates basically obscurement for you. Um, give me a half a second. I think it just gives a complete cover, a 20 foot radius sphere. Da, 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 da. It's a sphere. It spreads around everything, so it shouldn't have any problems with like the foliage and all of that. It's awesome. All of the area is heavily obscured, and it lasts. It's going to last for an hour, but we're you know they'll be able yeah. to get through it. And we'll be able to get through it fast enough. Um, As you heavily obscure the area, I've just rolled a perception check for them, and they rolled low enough that you definitely get a little bit of a lead here as they're trying to pick up the sound of you. You're still making noise, and they'll eventually find you, but you now have a two-step lead on the wolves who are chasing you. Okay, Owlin would like to... If Jeb, is Jeb, are you done with what you were doing? Yeah, that's my thing. Cool. Owlin would like to take a turn to pull a wingle out of his pocket and um, (laughs) attempt... To run and use his um, artisan tools to tinker with the wingle 
And he basically, with his magical tinkering, he can make the Wingle, he can make a non-magical object, which I assume if the Wingle hasn't been activated, is it considered a non-magical object? Sure. Okay. He can make it emit a non-verbal sound that can be heard in a 10-foot radius around it. Um, and he wants to make it like a dog whistle sound that's really annoying to like a like wolf ears, but not human ears. And he needs to spend an entire turn doing it. But on the next turn, he can like toss it back and hopefully it can like distract the wolves enough. That's his idea. That We're going to use do. a constitution check to okay. try and maintain concentration as you're like running and balancing Jeb and using your tools. Okay. Uh, you're going to roll it at disadvantage, but the DC is only 10. This is a fairly simple spell. It's just that your environment is making it difficult to do. It is, and I, I don't know if this changes anything. It is not technically a spell. It's a class ability. Just so well, know. yeah, okay. I meant what you're making the, the thing do. Like, it's simple magic that you're imbuing. I, you said disadvantage? Yes, please. I've already failed. I got a 7. Ah, uh, man. So you're trying... I would like to use my chronal shift, oh. my last one of the day, to have him re-roll that. So I roll disadvantage again? Yes. Okay. 14. Excellent. So you are able to create it, and next round you'll be able to throw that back. Sweet. The wolves are going to attempt to coordinate by howling for friends. So they're going to roll a charisma check. They rolled too low. So they do not gain a, a step on you. They Sweet. kind of, like, some of them slowed down to howl loud, hoping that some others of their pack would cut you off, but it wasn't audible to Thank them. Thank you, Jeb, for the chronal shift, by the way. I didn't say that right away. Brings us back to you guys. <laughs> no, Either of you who want, any of you um, who want to do something can. Quick, quick. Rub this, rub this on yourself. And I, I just pull out a, a raw ration meat and just start <laughs> rubbing it all over my clothes Why? to get, like, That's my the scent. Opposite. That's I want to get my scent of... onto the meat. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, just get get your scent on the meat any way you can. Just put something into it, and I, and I toss it back Spit behind on me. it. Okay, um, I'm going to give them. Uh, let's do an, a wisdom check for them to discern between whether it's you or not. They rolled a 19. They know. Um, they ignore the meat and continue tearing after. When you. Alan sees that they ignore the meat, he's going to toss the wingle that ha that is now emitting the dog whistle sound. Great. I'm going to roll for them. Okay. Two of them tear off after it, but one of them continues following you. Uh, so, there's so there's only one wolf okay. in pursuit now. Um, mm. The others have gone off after the whistle because they're all distracted by it. Um, but the one wolf, now that it's like just one, Jeb, you're able to get a glimpse of it through the trees, and it is easily as tall as Alan's shoulders. This oh, is a no. dire wolf that is chasing you. Um, and it because there's still the one after you, you did not gain a step lead on it. It is going to try and knock down a tree that is already like hit by lightning, and it rolled poorly on its strength check, so it does not. We are still at a two-step lead here. You guys have another chance now to try and get yourselves a little bit further ahead of this wolf. Oh, wow. Um, does, does Alan see that it's a dire wolf as well? Jeb can tell him, sure. Murky okay. mirror. Only bully, guys. <laughs> no, that's not a wolf. That, no. No, I think Zoth would be okay with killing this one. <laughs> when Alan hears that, he's going to throw his returning javelin at the dire wolf behind him. Roll it's hit. so big, you can't miss. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep running. <laughs> I ain't looking back. Natural 20, going to roll to confirm. Did not confirm. Wait. Okay, so we're going to say that you hit it and slowed it enough to get your third step of lead when you turn around to continue running. Like, it, it basically kind of shuddered and, and stepped back a little bit. You did six points of damage, if that matters. Too. Awesome. So you can now, you can roll stealth to hide from the wolf. You can roll athletics to outrun the wolf's pursuit, which it will con it's going to contest any of these to see if it can continue pursuing. Um, or you can come up with another idea and just pitch it to me as what, what you'd be doing. But those are the two that I know work. Do we uh, all have to roll it, or does one, per do we one person? Do we one person will roll for the party? Okay. Um. What do we think is going to be the best option? Guys, um. Do, there's a lot of these trees burnt, right? Um. Do you think? Do you think, Alan, you could push one of these down, or Jeb, maybe use your magic to push it over? If if we can just create a barrier, we can just outrun it. Um. I I, I could try to do that. Um, it might be a little crude. I just don't want to be chow, okay? I was, I, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Whatever and works. I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to pull out big boy and lock and load a shell. 
and uh, and cast canned of uh, sorry, not canned. I'm not. I'm gonna cast canned food at him. No, um, <laughs> we already we already tried the rations. Why am I thinking of that? That's stupid. Um, I'm going to cast a uh, hand of coal, and I wanted to just grab like a, a tree the trunk that's already downed and just baseball bat. And we're gonna try and uh, moons of Endor. Guy. Yeah, moons of Endor. This guy. Okay. Um, the let's do the a... way the hand of coal works. It's just like he would need to do a strength save if okay. you wanted to do it that way. So like cinematic flair or whatever it could come out another he way. He rolled a 19. That's... Cool. That's <laughs> a lot. Um, so and he just he's not splinters knocked the wood, back. I presume. Yeah, so he's not knocked back by it, but the wood does like splinter on him. And so you're still at your three-step lead. So you can come up with another way to like lose the pursuit now. You don't uh, need to get ahead of him. May it, may it just be best for us to... Uh, simply try to outrun it, or or just just see if we can do that. We are far enough I, away. I don't know if I can keep this up, man. Uh, uh, one last ditch effort. Let's let's just try it. Uh, all right. Fox has I'm been hitting going. the French toast a little too heavily lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alan will try to roll athletics for them to outrun. Okay. I'll also roll, I guess, since we're uh, both running. Twenty-two. All right. You are able, Fox. It's okay. I just one person can represent the party in this case. So okay. you are able to outrun the wolf finally with its splintered tree over it. You finally hear it slow down and turn back, and it howls mournfully as you hurtle through the what remains of the woods and finally break out of the woods. You are about halfway up a hill, and at the top of the hill, you see Zothkug. Yo! At the top of the hill, there is Zothkug, and he's standing there, facing down some kind of construct, okay? he Wind is whipping the plants woven into his chainmail like lashes on a cat of nine tails. He has ripped the legs off an iron golem, cutting the construct down to about his own height. The sunlight stares unflinchingly as Zothkug delivers the killing blow to the golem with his bare Whoa. fist, hitting it once, twice, a third time, directly in the center of its iron chest, right on the embossed logo of the Bright World Company, until it caves in. His eyes are hard as stone as he reaches down to his pot, pulls the last leaf off of his magic plant, and calls a guiding bolt from the sky. The streak of radiant light burns straight through the golem, and with a whirring and whining of gears grinding to a halt, the construct goes limp at the top of the hill. The only sound remaining is the lonely cry of the wind, like a sad child mourning that he's been left out of play by his peers, and then that too is gone, and all that remains is Zothkug who turns around and sees you. And with something new in his eyes, he says, I'm ready for whatever it takes. Whoa! Jeb just slow claps, sitting up on Alan's shoulders. Are, are you okay? I, like, walk up, like, with, you know, trying to make sure it's just him and me. Like, are do you... Are, are, you, are you good? Are, are you going through something with... He like sighs a little bit and all the fight goes out of him as he kind of slumps and he's like, yeah, I'm good. But that was, that was a lot. I, um, I could probably use some time to just chill and meditate. That was not the vibe that I thought I was going to get on this hill. Okay. Um, I think maybe we should go, maybe we should go back to, uh, you know, somewhere that isn't out here in the wild. There are lots of things out here in the wild. This, uh, yeah. by the way, this guy had the, uh, Bright World Company logo on it, so probably that's an issue. Um, uh, Alan, uh, would yes. you mind taking a look at this thing? I you would, with your tinker tools. I would love to. Um, Alan would love to roll something to get info on. Sure, this. you're an artificer now, so you yeah. can use Arcana or Investigation. That's better hey, for me. Can I give him assistance? Uh, sure, Jeb, you can give him assistance. I shall roll investigation. Oh, well then actually, Jeb, just let him, let's see what he comes up with. I got a 14. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, this is an iron golem. An iron golem, like all golems, is a construct, a, a creation that usually is given like a single task. And then when its task ends, it's just dismantled again. Um, this one in particular, it's about 15 shins tall. It has the Bright World Company logo embossed at the center of its chest, or it did before Zoth blasted a hole in it. And um, it's... 
Like, you can't make out any of its commands because they're things that you give it after the thing is created. Like, sure. a construct is somewhat sentient. But you are able to trace the design, the engineering, and some of the mechanical parts of it back to Edison. So, although this has the Bright World Company logo on it, mm. it's using Edison technology, which makes it a likely construct from the dark site or something similar. Like, it sure. seems like their operation might be back up and running if oh. they're able to have built something like this and sent it after you. But um, do uh, this is like a lore question that maybe we would know the answer to. Um, is uh, Mollusk uh, back in charge of Edison, or do, is like uh, is the 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 Aboleth's minion still like kind of in like using a part of her company? Well, Elaine Mollusk is still in charge of Edison, but she is not. She was not in charge of what was happening in the dark site. So gotcha. it's most likely that the Aboleths have enslaved the. Um, employees of, of Edison who they have down there. Like, they just needed some science minds. Gotcha. Um, think, like, when they're working with the Tesseract in the Avengers. Sure, I get you. Yeah. It's all the twist in the event. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, it's, Alan will explain, pretty much explain that to uh, Jeb specifically. Um, it, it seems as though, uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what this was made for, um, aside from, obviously, some destruction of this uh, this for us, perhaps even destruction of the shrine. Um, perhaps these holy hey. sites, like the shrine that we were at earlier, maybe these holy sites um, are detrimental to the Abolith's plans. Um, oh, that's, that's a good idea. But uh, we, So we don't know exactly what it was made for. However, it seems as though it's quite possible that the dark site is operational once again. As uh, the, Why do you say that? I, I, Alan will point at specific parts on it. Be like, uh, do you recognize this? And like, point at like, because like they were both in the, you know, in the factory. Yeah. They would probably be able to recognize uh, parts that they saw. Whoa, 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 guys! Uh, this is, I mean, I'm sure you two've got this. Uh, but are you meaning to tell me that this boils down to the Aboleth is is just trying to destroy them? Is this is this like the children's story, Fern Folly, about about the big bad people destroying the environment? Is is this what this has turned into? Is is the Aboleth trying to destroy the environment? Is that I, what you're trying to I, tell I me? I believe that perhaps if a certain god gains power from the environment, you know, such as this forest being a holy site for um, Kotix, as we saw that that shrine earlier, um, perhaps yes, perhaps in some cases it is uh, beneficial for the Aboleth to destroy places like this. Also, Alan, in your experience as a military man, most golems that are made of iron are meant to go and fight things. They're not meant to go and find or do things. Like, there are cheaper ways to make a golem if it's okay. not supposed to be in combat. And and this this golem was designed for combat, or if not combat, you know, destruction. So um, that's that seems to be... Like, if, if they wanted to just search something out here and not go scorched earth on it, um, they would have found a much subtler way to do so. I, I mean, can we find out where it came from? Uh, uh Zoth, was it just sitting on this hill? Well, no, it actually it it kind of ran up to me while I was meditating. I found this really cool shrine, you guys. It was like this small pond, and there was this this really small creature who was sitting on this this twig, and we had this conversation, and man, it like it really changed the way that I see the world, man. Like there's this whole new vibe that I just am you know that I think about now. Uh, but anyway, while I was there, we had this conversation, and then a little while after she left, you know, I was meditating and just chilling and doing my thing, and then out of the woods came this loud stomping, and I turned around, and this huge thing was chasing me, and I didn't want, you know, I didn't want anything to happen to the shrine, man, so I, I ran away from the shrine for a little while, um, but I was thinking about what this wheeling said, and I was like, you know, she was totally right, man, like... Like, I, I don't need to be, like, held back by, like, all the baggage and stuff, man. And so then I was like, let me just see. And, you know, and I and I, I, I got in a fight with it. And I, I kind of went a little overboard, if I'm honest with you guys. I feel like I maybe took it a little too far. But, I you know, I, I'm just trying. I'm trying it out, man. Maybe, Alan, maybe you can teach me a little bit or uh, something. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, I will say uh, I believe you did an incredible job. And there's no need to feel um, remorse for what you did, as this is simply a construct. It is not. It has never <clears> been a sentient, intelligent being um, with with a life force. So you, have, it's essentially a machine. So there's no reason to uh, feel remorse about about vanquishing uh, it. Ms. Hoth, did you um, 
Do you find plants at that shrine? I uh, uh, no, dude. I'm I'm trying not to do that anymore. You know, because of the the whole thing with yeah. It's, so you're one hundred percent. Oh, okay. I did not expect. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Jeb, do do you think your fob? Do you think the cart can get here? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think the the fob like calls the cart. Like that was the other one. Oh, that was the other one. Darn. Yeah, I don't think we flipped the bill for that one. We we. we and as Jeb's talking about this, other parts. As Jeb's talking about this, he's like climbing up into the hole that's blasted through the chest of uh of this iron golem, and he's like poking his head. Out. He's like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't." Did like I would, Did we spring the bill for that one? I, I, don't, I don't believe I don't so. Remember. I believe we decided on Featherfall instead. Like we did the one where it'll automatically drive, but I don't think it's like you know locates us and drives to us. It'll drive on water as well or underwater. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yes, it was like a prototype. Uh, Elaine was was like, "Hey," when she threw me that one, I was like, "Hey, here's you know got some wow. cool prototype stuff on it." But maybe I should um, have sat in with you guys when you were talking to Elaine. I well, you were kind of locked up in a dungeon. Yeah, that's, at the time. True. So I mean I will I'm willing to blame that on you if you want, but you know, it seems a little below the belt. Oh uh, wait, DM you figured this out beforehand? Wow. What's up? Um I while I'm up in the hole blown through this iron golem's chest, can I locate its power source? Absolutely. Um you see a cipher on the inside of it, and the way that it's constructed is the cipher has a little hopper above it, a little funnel. And there's a rotating, or it was rotating once it was started, but like a little rotating canister of wingle digits. And so it's just been basically steadily refilling a cipher to keep itself running. The supply is significantly diminished. It seems to have come a long way. Um, and that's how it was powered. Okay. I'm going to try and, and dismount the, 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 the cipher. And like the the mechanism that feeds ciphers into it, or that feeds wiggle digits into it, you give it a shot, but the construction is a little too complex for your uh, sort of layman's, you know, understanding. Like you don't have the tools or the knowledge necessarily to get the part out of it. And I get, can I empty the wiggle digits out of it? Not without like dis like dismantling that piece of it. Gotcha. There is someone in your party who might have the tools yeah. and knowledge. I'm gonna poke out there and be, hey, Alwyn. Uh, um, yes. I had a bit of an idea. I'm I'm not sure if I, I think this thing will be useful. I'm looking at the power source on this, like, and he'll like move towards yeah, the back, I'll the hole on the back of it. Well. Yeah. Um. So I was kind of wondering, you know, like this thing kind of sounds like what you were talking about a homunculus was, and I thought maybe mm -hmm. you could substitute the power source for this for that, but it, it looks like it's cipher related. I'm I'm not sure if that'll fit, but. I don't know. There's a mechanism for like automatically loading wingle digits, and, and I thought maybe if it doesn't work out for a uh, hum homunculus type thing, maybe we could like retrofit it onto the uh, cipher cart and have it like mm. auto load wingle digits into one of the one of the spells. That that sounds extremely interesting. Hey, this is all over my head, but that sounds awesome. <laughs> um. Can Alan do like an Arcana check or something to see whether like yeah. substituting Wingle digits for a, a precious gem would make a homunculus work? Because like theoretically, if that were to happen, then the homunculus could function even while Alan is outside of uh, Jeb's range of his staff. Because the homunculus would, I think, pretty much only work while the like while the the whole um, right magical mm -hmm. weave thing was working. But if he could power a homunculus via Wingle digits. Then, then it could like function autonomously, essentially. Um, so, so this this is a golem which is different from a homunculus. Okay, but um, I mean, it's conceivable that there is a way to make a homunculus run on wingle digits. It just wouldn't be exactly this thing. Okay, but you could dismantle this power source and take it with you and like tinker with it for a while, and maybe you'd come up with something that could probably be a downtime construction. Okay, and then if Alan thought more also about how this could apply to the cipher truck 
would that be a more beneficial use of the time? Like, would that would that work as well? Or like, yeah, no? this is okay. this is an auto loader for Wingle digits. So okay. something you already have that already runs on Wingle digits, you could install the auto loader to it, and I it would, would perpetually we'll explain run. that stuff to Jeb and basically say, uh, it, it, you know, either way, I believe it would be beneficial to try to uh, detach this and take it with us. Um, we'll decide what we act, like what what we want to use it for, maybe um, in the future. I, I knew you'd be able to figure it out, man. You're just you're so much better with like how the intricacies of this kind of stuff works than I am. I I, I appreciate that, but um, you know, we make a great team. You you have the the wild practical ideas, and I have the 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 brains to see if uh the the technology behind that would even happen. So it, it and I'm here too. Like, yeah, you know what Papa Cole always too, said? Says Zoth. Papa Cole always said, uh, he said, I've, I've got the know-how, you've got the do-how. Exactly. And I think that's reverse for us. you got the know-how and i got the do-how. I think that's, that's completely correct. And on that note, another chapter of the Adventures of Four Guys, Adventures and Vibes, comes to a close.